What is up? No way, Bob. Here, no when he sees family. Fast switch family. Welcome back. We're here, Coach Tut, the curly headed freak, and Coach Eric Jones. Um, today, we're going to talk to you guys <laughs> and give you the basic overview of intermittent fasting and what it is. It is probably one of the most commonly used nutrition styles nowadays. It's, there's been a huge increase of people doing it to essentially drop weight, drop body fat. It's something that I've done many times, many different times for many different years. Use it at different times throughout different training cycles. You're on it now. Um, I just started to do it again because I want to lean out a little bit. But the basic concept of it is that you put yourself in a fasted state. So intermittent fasting, you put yourself in a fasted state long enough where your body starts to burn off the excess fat on you. Now there's a few different things that can really throw that off. So if you're not doing it right, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Um, the first piece of it is that it just comes down to the simple math. Mm -hmm. If you shorten your eating window, you're not going to. It's going to be harder for you to get into the caloric surplus to gain weight. So simply the math numbers are going to help you lose weight. The other piece of that is when you fast long enough, your body actually starts to recognize um, that you're in the fasting state and it's going to burn, start burning off the fat. Okay, so by those two things together, you're going to really start to see a decrease in body weight and really see the fat start to drip off. Now, it's, it's definitely important to make sure before doing something like this, you become knowledgeable or aware of what you're diving into. Because as Chris alluded to, you will there are some dangers that could go into if you're not following this programmed and, and efficiently. You're manipulating your hormones, essentially. So anytime you're doing something like that, you could have the adverse effect. Your cortisol exactly. levels could spike. Your fat retention can spike. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're following the somewhat strict guidelines and rules and regulations of what exactly intermittent fasting is. Yeah, I would say, too, kind of along the lines of that is, you know, you got to make sure it, it, it can only be for a certain demographic of people for certain goals, right? Like you said, it's mainly for dropping body fat, dropping weight. So if you're an athlete or even a youth athlete or somebody who has multiple training sessions a day, um, you know, intermittent fasting might not be the, the, the answer for you, you know, so, you know, try to go maybe a, a little different route of that. So it definitely has its specific goals and specific results um, depending on who you are. So, you know, I'm in the athletic space and intermittent people ask me about intermittent fasting all the time. I said, well, you know, you're waking up at six in the morning training, then you got class all day, then you have practice and then you have, you know, treatment at night. Like that's going to be tough to get in the amount of calories that you need to be able to sustain that kind of lifestyle. So, you know, intermittent fasting is great for somebody who is just trying to look a little bit better aesthetically, right? But for somebody who's trying to have, you know, strength, you know, serious strength gains or as an athlete, intermittent fasting might not be your best bet. So it really depends on, on what your goals are and who you are. So always try to remember that. And it's not to say that you can't get those things during this. It's just when you fast, the point of it is, it's harder for you to get in the calories. So yeah. you, there, you, there's people that still can do it, but you have to be really conscious about yeah. hitting the right amount of calories and proteins in that window. And, and two, like the, I've done it before too myself. It is somebody who lives a very busy lifestyle though, like if you're at work and you can't get a, you know, if you can't get certain meals in at certain times, like it almost fits into your work schedule where I wake up, I'm fasting the entire day until I have my lunch break. Mm -hmm. So for somebody like that, that'd be great where it's a way to monitor your calories and monitor what you're putting in your body without really, you know, having to do too much legwork for it. You know, I'm just, hey, I'm going to fast here. This is my feed period. And, you know, go, go and, you know, go on from there. It's, it's not too complicated for somebody who has like a lot of things going on if you're constantly on the run or something like that. So yeah, and for me, a, that's what it worked best for. It's a simple way to do it. It's actually, you know, you can save money because you're cutting out some meals. So the basic overview of it is there's a few different ways to do it, but the most popular one is a 16 and eight. So you put yourself into a 16 hour fast and you have an eight hour eating window each day. That being said, so most people do a 12 to eight. So say you start fasting Sunday night, you stop eating at eight o'clock. At 8 o'clock, after 8, you don't eat again. Your first meal is at noon, okay? So you have those 16 hours where you're not eating. And then from noon to 8 p.m., you can eat. You need to make sure you get your proteins in. You need to make sure you're still hitting a sufficient amount of calories taken in. After time, throughout, after a couple weeks, your stomach's actually going to shrink. So it's you're going to look at the clock and be like, wow, it's 2 o'clock, I haven't eaten it, I'm still not hungry. So you need to be conscious of that, or else it's a very easy way to burn off muscle accidentally. Second piece of that is if you, so if you commit to this and you do it, I always say do it half ass. It's the same dangers as doing keto half ass, yeah. right? If you, I'm going to fast from 8 p.m. to noon, 
you end up having a little banana here or a little snack, if you break that fast, you're, you're, A, you're not putting yourself into a fasted state to burn the fat off, and then B, if your body realizes you're starving itself and giving it a little something, starving itself, giving it a little something, your body is gonna realize, wow, this guy's gonna starve me again, I'm going to hold that fat and store it for next time that he mm -hmm. does it. So if you can't commit 100% to it, it's not to you. We're not saying it's gonna be easy, it's, it's challenging. But also, there's ways to get through that fast. We're not saying nothing. You could have black coffee, water, zero calorie BCAs are a great thing during it. That's why we created ours. Um, as long as it's under 30 calories, they say, you're gonna stay in your fasted window. So you can even have a splash of creamer. That's what I do in the morning for a little flavor. Um, so anything under 30 calories in that window is a good thing. Um, but and then also, we don't say to do it seven days a week. You wanna do it about six days a week to start and have one refeed day, they call it. Trick your body, shock your metabolism so it doesn't get used to it. You just get stagnant with it. So every Sunday, maybe you mm -hmm. just crush and you're back to it. You're going to feel that Monday after you crush on Sunday. Sunday's expanding. It's going to be harder for you to get to that fast. You'll be hungry. Yeah. Starving. If you guys have any questions or concerns or want to dive into what intermittent fasting is a bit more, feel free to reach out to any three of us. And remember, fuel your body. Fill your sleeves. Oh, and whoa.